One of the slightly more advanced skills to master, but one that is incredibly satisfying to learn, is the art of truing your own wheels. There are many reasons why you may need to true your wheel throughout the course of its life. Maybe you've hit a pothole and slightly buckled it, or perhaps your spokes have lost a little bit of tension. Follow this step-by-step -step guide to having your wheels running sweet once more. Now, before we get started, you'll notice that we do indeed have a wheel truing stand here. This isn't essential, but it will make the job that little bit easier. If you don't have a wheel truing jig at home, and chances are you probably don't, you already own the perfect wheel truing jig, and that is the frame or the forks on your bike. Simply leave the wheel mounted in your bike and attach a pen or a chalk on the seat stays or on the fork with some masking tape, and then adjust them as the gauge on the rim. Every time the wheel comes over where it's buckled, it'll touch the pen and that'll be your marker for working out where the buckle is. So the tools you're going to need for the job? Well, first and foremost is the spoke key. I'm not sure why it's called a spoke key and not a nipple key, because it does turn the nipples and not the spokes. Nipples come in all different shapes, sizes and colours. For example, these are anodized. Therefore, it's really important to have a nipple key that fits your nipples perfectly. If you have one that's slightly too big, you're going to end up rounding your nipples off and that's going to make it really hard to make any adjustments to your wheel. The spokes you don't want to turn at all, so for bladed spokes you need a specific tool like this, but if you're doing it on a budget and you do have a pair of pliers already at home, or you have round spokes, these will work just fine. Simply clamp them and prevent the spoke from twisting with the nipple. So now we know what tools we're using, what are we up against? Well, this wheel has a slight buckle. I found the buckle by spinning the wheel in my wheel chewing stand, and you could do this at home by spinning it in your frame. You're likely to know where the buckle is because you'll see the wheel's got a center point, and at some point it's moving away from that center point, over to the right or to the left. And it's likely only to be a small part of the wheel. And you need to work out how many spokes this buckle is across. On ours here, I can see that it spans around three spokes, and it starts around here, and it continues to touch until about here. So these three spokes, or these two spokes rather, this one's likely to be up to tension, are gonna be the ones that I'm gonna focus my adjustments on. One really important thing to remember when treeing a wheel is that spokes work in opposing pairs. By tightening the spokes on the left-hand side, you're pulling the wheel over to the left. By tightening the spokes on the right-hand side, you're pulling it over to the right. And the most important thing to remember is the direction you're turning the nipple. And I always find it easiest to stand above the wheel and to picture screwing the nipple down onto the spoke, clockwise to add tension and anti-clockwise to release tension. Now we've highlighted where the buckle is, more often than not, the cause of this will be the fact that the spokes on the opposite side have lost their tension. This is because of the flex and the use of the wheel throughout its lifespan or the impact that it received. So we're gonna start by making very small minor adjustments. We'll take our spoke holder to prevent the spokes from twisting and we'll start to apply a tiny bit of tension to these nipples. So the best way to do this is to look down from above and picture you're screwing the nipple onto the spoke. In other words, you'll be turning it in a clockwise direction as you look at it. I'd recommend not giving it more than half a turn at a time and then checking how that adjustment works. Because we have bladed spokes on this wheel, it's actually very easy to see that we're keeping the spokes nice and true as well. If you have round spokes at home, you're likely to have to squeeze very hard with the pliers to keep them in place. You may even find it beneficial to give the nipple an extra turn and then turn it back. This often returns the spoke to its natural position. So far, I've made one adjustment to one spoke, just half a turn, and that's had a significant improvement to the shape of my wheel, but it's still touching my gauge. So I now need to turn and see which part of the rim is being pushed against that gauge. And I can see quite clearly that it's this next spoke here. So taking the same approach to this spoke or to this nipple, I'm gonna turn it down on top of the spoke to add a little tension to it. And this should have the effect of bringing the rim back from the right-hand side of the wheel towards the left. Once you get to the point where your rim is no longer clipping the gauge that you've got in place, whether that's a makeshift one at home, your rim brakes, or a wheel chewing jig, you can probably start to ease up on the adjustments you're making. Whilst it's great to chase perfection, chasing the buckle around the wheel is only gonna weaken your wheel as you start to make those minor adjustments. Keep your attention focused on that initial area and you'll have no problems. In the case of a severe buckle, you may find that you can actually feel where the buckle is just by squeezing the spokes. You'll notice that these are twin cross as they leave the hub, they cross each other twice. Squeeze those pairs and work out where the tension is or isn't. You will also find that the drive side of a rear wheel will have tighter tension and the braking side of a front wheel will often have more tension as well. There's one more thing that I haven't mentioned, and this is perhaps more relevant if you're renovating a bike, and that's making sure that your wheel stays within alignment. If you don't have a wheel alignment gauge like this one, you already own the best alignment gauge out there, and that's your frame. Make sure that your wheel is dead true with your seat tube at the back and that the center of your rim is in line with the center of your head tube on the front. 
So there you have it, something that at first perhaps seems quite complicated, but in reality is actually really simple to do. And in a way, it's kind of therapeutic as well. Have you ever tried chewing a wheel? Let us know down in the comments below how you got on. If you enjoyed this video, give us a thumbs up. And for more Maintenance Mondays, click just down there.